Okay, this section is on exponential functions. And what is an exponential function? Well, an exponential function is a function or an equation where the variable is up in the exponent. So you can see, for example, you might have an x up on the, uh, the uh, exponent, for example, like y equals 2 to raised to the x power. Uh, we haven't done any problem like that before. Uh, or if we're dealing with t's, with time, maybe you might have time up here as a exponent. Well, this uh, problem right here that we have is an example of uh, a exponential and exponential function. And what this is about is a banking problem where A is the amount of money that you end up with in the bank if you make a lump sum deposit principle of a certain amount of money. So you're just putting a hunk of money in the bank and leaving it there for so many years, T. That's what T is. And your interest rate is the interest rate that the bank gives you. And that either has to be typed in with a des uh, as a decimal, like if it's 6%, you have to type in 0 0.06, or you can type the percent afterwards. Um, and if you work it out by calculator, make sure you switch it over to a decimal. And N, finally, is the number of times you get interest in a year. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, do this first problem here. It says uh, you have $500 to invest in a bank that gives 6.25% compounded annually. How much interest do you earn in five years? And it says to use that formula that we had right above, and it tells you what each thing stands for. So on this problem, the principal was $500. I'm just substituting numbers into this equation right here. The principal was $500, and then it says 1 plus the interest rate. Well, the interest rate was 6.25%, which if I move my decimal two places to the left is 0 0.0625, divided by N, N is the number of times you get interest in a year, and on this problem it says that you're getting interest um, annually, so that means that you're getting interest one time a year, so your N is 1, and that's raised to the N times T, or on this problem, 1 times 5. So if you were going to do this problem by hand, you would have to take 1, well, you first of all, take 0 0.0625 divided by 1, which is 0 0.0625. Then 1 plus that would be 1.0625. And don't, don't round till the end if you need to round to the nearest hundredth, but don't round until the end. So we get 1.0625, then that would have to be raised to the fifth power, so you'd probably want to use a calculator to do that much for you, and then multiply by 500. And you'd end up with $677.04 is the amount of money in the bank. Now it says how much interest did you earn, so what you'd have to do is subtract off the $500 from that, and you get $177.04 in interest that you earn. Let's talk through one more before we go to the bank sheet on Excel. Uh, B says, what about if it was compounded quarterly? Well, quarterly means you're getting interest four times a year. So we're staying with the same interest rate. So everything stays the same except the N now changes to four because it's compounded quarterly. So you would have to take the 0 0.0625 divided by four, add one to it, raise that to the 20th power because it's four times five, quarterly times five years, that's 20 times you're getting interest. Then multiply that answer times 500 and you get 681.77. Not that much extra money. It's about $4 extra or $4.73 extra over a five-year period. And your interest would be 100 that you earned is $181.77 from subtracting the 500 off of this. And you could trump it up to monthly if we wanted to. Monthly, we would put 12 in there for the uh, N. And you could jump it up to daily. And if you do daily you'll see that there's not much difference here. It would be $183.40. So there's not much difference. And even if we wanted to go hourly, there's 8,760 uh, hours in a year. So if I substituted 8,760 N for N, it still only raises it up a penny from what it was daily. Now you can do all these banking type of problems on the banking sheet. And that's the sheet I'm on right now. I'm on the left-hand side of the sheet where you have this formula. And right here, I'm finding the amount of money that you end up with. It will also find the interest earned here. So I typed in 500. Then right here, for the interest rate, I typed in 6.25%. The percent sign is shift with the uh, 5 key. Or you could just type it in as a decimal point, 0625. Then type in your N, which is the number of times you get interest in a year, which the first problem was annually. And here's the number of years. And it just substitutes the numbers into the formula, and you get $677.04, or this is the amount of money that you earned in interest. Now, if you wanted to get quarterly, we just type in 4, and you can see the interest earned. And if it was monthly, we would type in 12. And if it was uh, daily, we type in 365. And let's see, uh, hourly, we could type in equals 365 times 
uh, 24, and that would tell me how many hours there are in a year, and that would tell me the amount of interest earned right there. So it's $183.41 if it was compounded uh, every hour. Okay, let's see what happens to this formula as uh, uh, as you get interest every moment. You know, if you would get interest every moment. Well, there are an infinite amount of moments in a year. So in other words, we're saying what's happening to this formula as I substitute in values for n, the number of times that you get interest, as that gets larger and larger and approaches infinity. Well, here's my interest earned at, uh, for this particular problem with five years, and it was uh, $500 and so on at 6.25%. We ended up with $177.04 compounded annually, $181.77 compounded quarterly, a difference of about $4.73. When we jumped clear up to daily, it only jumped up about $2.00. And 37 cents, not that much of a jump. And look, when you jump it up from getting interest 365 times a year daily to getting interest 8,760 times a year um, every hour, it only jumps up by a penny. And then, if we uh, actually figured out and multiplied it by how many minutes there are in a year, then it doesn't even jump up by a penny. So if we did every second, I don't even know if it would make it to uh, two seconds. So what we can do is, as this is approaching infinity, we use a different section of the sheet, and we use this area right here. Now this section of the sheet is used anytime something is compounded continuously, whether it be interest is compounding continuously, or maybe the value of something is, is growing continuously, or decaying, like it could be that uh, some radioactive element is decaying, and we would find out how much there would be left after a certain amount of time. Well, we would be using this side of the sheet here. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll put in uh, 500 for the principal. The interest rate was 6.25%. And the T was five years. And if I do this, I get $683 uh, and 0.41897. So I guess closest to 42 cents. Uh, and here's the amount of interest earned. Now, if I compare these two answers, here's for uh, every uh, moment, okay, getting interest every moment or getting interest continuously. And over here is uh, every hour. And this is 41821, and this is 41897. So just barely larger. So it's actually like kind of leveling off here. Now, what do all these things stand for here? Well, A is the amount of money you end up with, P is your principal, R is your rate as a decimal, and uh, T is the amount of time that you leave the money in the bank. What is E? Well, E is a number, and it's a number like pi that goes on forever. It's approximately 2.71828182846. I carried it that long so that you can see that it doesn't repeat. And it's a number that's used a lot of math, and actually that's what this formula converts to when interest is compounded continuously is this formula right here. So you don't put in the end because we can't type in infinity in there, but uh, that's what we would end up with right here is the answer to that problem. So again, anytime something is growing continuously, exponentially growing continuously or decaying continuously, use the A equals PERT, PE to the RT, PERT formula. And when it's uh, like a banking problem where it's you're getting interest annually, monthly, quarterly, or daily, then use this formula right here. Now, let's take a look where E might come up. Here's a, an example, uh, F of X equals 1 plus 1 over X raised to the X. Now, the easiest place to graph that would be the um, any graph sheet. And let me just um, uh, show you what I typed in. I'm going to graph the function 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. So I typed in equals 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. Hit enter. And then I'm going to go down here and click the uh, get graph. And I want to graph this. I don't want to start at 0 because that would be division by 0. But let's start at 1 and go out to a large number. I don't know. How about 1,000 or so? If I do that, I can see this graph is going up and leveling off like this. And what it's actually leveling off to is that number E. So uh, I tell you what, let me go even higher. Let's go 1,000. Let's start at 1,000 so you can see what, what you get in here. And you get 2.7181. So you get the idea that as this gets larger and larger, it's going to be leveling off to, here it is, 2.7182. And let's go out really far here with this. 
you can see it's leveling off, and that's a lot of digits. It levels off to E. Why does that matter? Because down here in the derivation of the formula, we have 1 plus 1 over X, and that would be where the E comes from. So this is how the formula is derived.